Hey guys, it's Ann at ASMM Digital Marketing, and we're back with our Small Business Connections. I am so excited because we are today going to talk about nonprofits. And yesterday we talked about a nonprofit. We talked about chambers and how they can't get any funding. Um, but we haven't talked about what happens with nonprofits. They're really, some of them are really, really more needed now than ever. But at the same time, they can't do the fundraising they normally do. So today I'm bringing on Michael uh, Kaimona from Warrior Music Foundation. Actually, Michael's from about a thousand different things. So I'm going to let him introduce himself. Give me one second here. There you go. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hey, Ann, how are you doing this morning? I'm good. I know we're going to talk about Warrior Music Foundation. You've got a day job. We're not going to talk about that. But you also have a fun other job, another yeah. business. So tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, I well, I kind of got into Warrior Music through my company, 1710 Percussion, where I, I build drum sets and uh, have been doing that for about eight years now and started to get into charity through 1710. And it initially was just going to spin off a nonprofit from from that, but then decided to, to once I started to get this plan together, it, it kind of overtook 1710, but they're they're inextricably linked. So. Yeah. So what does Warrior Music do? Music Foundation do? Warrior Music, we provide free music therapy and free music lessons to active duty military veterans and their families. And it's a way to use music to help them combat whatever problems that they're experiencing, you know, as a result of deployments or combat. Um, but it's a, uh, it's, we partner with a group of board certified music therapists to provide the therapy. Um, it's a it's a really tested um, methodology to help people, and, uh, and it's been it's been really successful. So we do this in Maryland and in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, we've been we've been running now for a couple of years and are starting to see some really really great successes. And you team up with um, music local music schools, right? We do. Yeah, our, our initial idea was we thought maybe we would just create our own brick and mortar studio where we could provide therapy and lessons. But as we started to really think through it, that model just didn't scale for us. And we wanted the ability to reduce our overhead costs, but then kind of get out there more quickly. So we created a model where we partner with existing music studios. Um, in Maryland, there are really three big ones, Pretty Music Academy, who we know we're, we're close friends with, Ryan, Towson, uh, uh, Ryan Fowler up in Towson, and Bill's Music in Catonsville. And we have some private instructors that help us as well. And so this allows us to, to, you know, really integrate the veterans just into the community, right? So there's not an environment where they have to walk into a building that says veterans with mental health issues and are right. here. They just right. are going to a, a lesson studio and they're, they just get to integrate with, with people and, and talk about music. And if we have to provide them therapy, we do it right there on site. And it's, you know, it's a very, um, unintrusive way to to provide them the services yeah i love that and then the other thing that i that i i've had the um privilege of because i'm on the board so i had the privilege of learning some of the stuff you do and what and somebody told us it was um a mom and she said i couldn't get my husband to come and i know he needed it but my son also needed it and so i brought him and then my husband got more interested yeah, that's that was very deliberate, and it was it was really reassuring to to hear that testimonial of somebody that just kind of confirmed the plan. And we we knew we wanted to pay special attention to dependents because it's just an underserved population in the military. In fact, last year was the first ever DOD study on suicide within military dependents. It's just not something that gets a lot of attention, and there just aren't a lot of services for them. So. We that that was our theory, right? If we if mom or dad needed some help and we we thought we could get them some support, um, but they weren't quite ready, you know, let's see if we can help the 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 kids and and the kids need an outlet as well, especially if right. their parents are are you know they've got issues that they're trying to deal with. Um, and so we've had examples where the kids have gone back to mom or dad and said, "Hey, this is really fun. Wouldn't it be great if we could take lessons together?" And right. And so, and it's just, it's just, it's worked well, but also, you know, in that same story that you were talking about, when we heard from the dad who was active duty, 
his perspective was, you know, it's really great when I'm on deployment and I know I don't have to worry about my son. I know he has something there. I don't have to worry about whether we can afford to put him in lessons and he's going to get the help that he needs. And that's just a little less stress for me. And so right. it, it just, it just, um, it was just reassuring to know that, that that all worked out. Yeah, no, I think that is, it, it, and it was, it was like this nice little circle, right? This nice circle of this, this really works. Yeah. That was, that was really impressive. So, all right, well, we got thrown a wrench in, in March and now we're running nonprofits in the middle of a crisis that, and one that we've never seen, right. something we've never seen. So, so what's it been like for you? Yeah, it, it has been really challenging and I'm, I'm sure we're not unique, right? I know that you obviously are, we partner on, on burgers and bands as well. And, and you suffer a lot of the same problems, but obviously it's like fundraising is, is, is next to nothing, right? We rely on public events to raise a lot of money. Um, you know, we had a big golf tournament that we had planned up in Pennsylvania for the spring, um, early summer, and we've had to postpone that. By this point, we will have had three or four local concerts that people have, will have put on for us. And, and that helps us really sustain the operation. And obviously none of that is happening. So um, it's, it's really difficult to raise money because it's such a human, it's such a, it's a contact sport. Right. You got to right. be out there. You got to be meeting people. You got to mix it up. You got to speak at events. And so you're really relying on just this virtual environment to help get your message out there. And, um, you know, probably for a good reason, it gets lost in the white noise. Right. There's all the attention is on the, the crisis right now. And that's where people right. need to put their attention and put their resources. Um, but at the same time, the demand has gone through the roof, right? So if you if yeah. you think about what we do, you know, we're a mental health organization. Um, well, I, I, we're a mental health organization and a veteran support organization, right? And we have right. to think about it from both perspectives. But um, isolation is something that really can exacerbate somebody's problems, right? If they are dealing with issues, then being isolated can it, it, it can compound whatever problems they're having. In addition to that, what we found was that they're not able to get to their primary care facility. They can't get to the VA. They can't get to their primary therapist. And and now over the last week, uh, month and a half, all their online services are starting to come online, but they were really slow up front. And right. so we got a lot of our veterans that reached out to us through the, our therapist and just said, Hey, I'm really struggling right now. I can't get to my, you know, my main therapy outlet. Right. What can you do to help? And so now the pressure is on right now you have an increased demand signal, but you're not making any money. Right. And yeah. So, um, it's a really, it's a really tough situation to be in. You know? Yeah, it really is. And it, and it's, you know, I, last week I had Laura, um, Reagan on, she's a counselor, and she said, you know, we're all dealing right now with collective trauma. This is a trauma for almost everybody. Almost everybody is affected in some way, right? But she said, then if you already have something, you know, you've already had a trauma in your background, this exasperates it, but not just because you're inside and you're alone, but because you're going through another trauma. And even though you're thinking, okay, this is what I'm thinking about right now. It's that other one that's sitting back here in the background, really eating at you. So yeah. it is, it's hard. And I've, we've thought about that with, um, I will say with burgers and bands, we, we get some news here in Anne Arundel County. Um, we get news as far as what the suicide rate is. And in March, it went down. There were fewer, there were actually February, January and February, I was really scared to see what this year was going to hold because we had a lot of suicides in the first two months of the year. Went down in March. I haven't seen the April numbers yet, um, but we're expecting that they'll go up. And it's very sad to say that. Yeah. Um, and we just don't have our, you know, for us and for you, I think part of what we're doing is just raising awareness that it's okay not to be okay. Right. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah and, yeah. and you think of there's, again, there's, there's it's just multiple variables, right? But, um, you know, there's a high percentage of veterans that suffer from alcohol, um, alcoholism and drug abuse and drug addiction rather. And, um, 
and that's a concern when you're in a situation like this as well. When all the stores except for the liquor stores are closed, you know, you've got a problem on your hands. So Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I, I that one I just don't understand. I don't get that one. All right. So let's talk about using innovation, right? We have we have these crazy challenges. How are we going to use the innovation to get to transcend them? How yeah, I mean, so so going back to your last question, right? We know that we're facing a challenge. And so we have to make a decision. Do we um, do we let it ruin us? Do we let it stop us? Do we let it stop our all the progress we made, or do we figure out a way to press on and to just move move through it? And I was really concerned up front, but actually it was our lesson studios that led the way for us. Right? They they decided, hey, we're going to pivot and we're going to provide online classes, and and that allowed us to say okay, we can continue to provide services. We can continue to provide lessons because the, the studios have figured it out. We can continue to provide therapy because our therapists have figured out how to do it remotely. Um, and, you know, it's a simple, it's a simple technology shift, but it, it was pretty impactful for us. Right. And that actually opened up some doors for us at the same time. As we were trying to decide where to go with our program, even before this, this crisis, the issue that we were running into was that our, we needed to change our business model a little bit because we needed to be able to provide resources to more people at a lower price point. And so we had a lot of volunteers who were interested in helping us, but we had to figure out how to really bring them into the fold. And so we had some ideas about, can we have volunteers provide um, online lessons to people who are, might be at a lower risk category? And this created that opportunity for us. So we actually launched a new program um, that is using volunteers that still go through the training. They still understand all the, the details of dealing with military veterans and people with potential mental health issues. And, um, and we were able to get more people through the pipeline. So believe it or not, at the end of this, we're actually supporting more people than we were because we're we're innovating, we're using different business models, we're using different technology to to move through it. Um, a couple of our studios, specifically the ones in, in Pennsylvania, they've they've just paused lessons and 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 felt that was the best move to make, which we agree with um, for those two scenarios. Um, but yeah, I think it's been you know I I've been telling a lot of people um, that companies, whether they're big or small, who can figure out how to use innovation to get through this time are going to be so much stronger when they get through. And frankly, they're going to dominate the market. The entire I, market, regardless of what it is, the market is going to be so different moving forward, right? Yes. I mean, just look at education as a, as a side note, right? Schools who had already figured out how to do remote learning mm -hmm. are, are excelling right now. And schools that were traditional brick and mortar colleges and universities they've stumbled to figure out how to provide remote services. Meanwhile, other schools that are already innovating, you know, you've got kids that are now realizing, hey, this is a fantastic education outlet. And right. you're gonna see a shift in the market because of that. So we right. have to just we have to just figure out how to to take advantage of that. Yeah, exactly. So actually, I want to stop real quick and say, if you're watching this, and we actually have quite a few people watching this, but if we, if you're watching this and you'd like to make a donation, we're just going to go ahead and tell you how. Michael, how do you make a donation? Yeah, just go right to our website. Just go to Warrior Music Foundation. There's a donate button right on the homepage. That's the okay. easiest way to do it. All right. And if you're watching and you have a question or you're watching and you're a student and you'd like to say something, we'd love to hear from you. We just yeah, uh, Trish, Trisha Pretty is on her her uh, uh, studio. She and Lee own hey, Pretty Trisha. Music Academy. So that's really nice that she's on here watching us. Um, all right, Michael. So let's but I do. I, I actually want to go back to that. I completely agree. When we have with with our clients, with the clients who are willing to make that pivot and say, OK, let's do these different things, you know, let's, let's add, you know, if it's a retail store, let's add curbside pickup, let's add delivery, let's, you know, change our right. website so that we have more products on there. Uh, maybe let's offer a new Fleet Feet Sports or Fleet Feet uh, out in Gaithersburg. They're doing fittings 
online. So they can, they're actually looking at your feet online and helping mm. you find the shoe that fits you, which is amazing. Um, so those people are making their, when they come out, I think when they come out the other side, they're going to do much, much better. Yeah. I mean, I think you, you have to evaluate what it does for your business model, right? If you can, if you can use it to increase your supply, but yet not increase your costs, then you're going to be, you're going to be okay. And I kind of go back to some of the things that we're doing differently. Um, you know, we've, we've pivoted, like I said, to online lessons and online therapy, which, you know, has been fantastic. And again, Trisha and Lee, you know, have kind of led the way there, Ryan and the team up at Bill's Music, they've done an amazing job of making that pivot as well. Um, but then one of the things we realized was that we started hosting these weekly um, group therapy sessions. And they're just open for all of our students, past, present, and future, right? So folks who have applied and they're on the waiting list or have already gone through in our alumni, um, it's an open forum. Our therapists have put a really fantastic curriculum together and it's a way just, our initial thought was if we can do this weekly, and give veterans just a way to connect with somebody, you know, we just, you just are missing that interaction. And so it was just, at first it was just an open hangout. There was really no agenda and veterans were just talking and meeting each other and we were just facilitating this. Right. But, but now it's been incredibly beneficial. You know, we've shifted to really like detailed, you know, we're in the, the block of curriculum we're in right now is about songwriting and using songwriting as therapy. It, and um and our therapists have just they've donated their time they've done this for us because they they think that it's something that's important and it just confirms that we picked the right team to work with you know right a, a, right in this regard um so going back to the challenges you know we've we've continued our primary service line right we're continuing to do what we've always done we've added new stuff right? We've added the ability to have these weekly online sessions. And there's going to be, you know, we have a couple other things that, that we're going to do. Um, and we've just increased our pipeline. And so I think with all of that, it's, it's been, it's been a pretty incredible experience for us. That's, you know, and that actually, I want to talk about that because you do, you know, we talked about, we're, we're going to talk about partnerships in a little bit, but, but I think this is a perfect segue into how do you know what to add? How do you know what to take away? And if you take away, take it away now, is it something that has to go away forever? Or maybe you find out it should go away forever. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. You know, this is, and I know you and I talk a lot about this and on um, you get, you get, especially early on, right. If you're somebody who, um, can see, I don't want to say you're a visionary, right? Because that's kind of overplayed, but you have a, a clear vision of where this can go in the future and how things can expand. You have this tendency to want to get there quick and, and potentially too quickly, right? Right. And, and so it's a decision that you, you have to make very carefully. So we, we see some of these potential pivots can be temporary. They can be short term. Um, and then you test them out and you see how they go. And if there's some staying power to it, then maybe you add that into your, into your toolkit. But you still have to remember that things are going to go back. Things are going to be back to some sense of normal. And so you have to be prepared to go back to that, you know, normal operating rhythm. Right. Um, and so it can be things like, you know, we certainly do want to have an online program moving forward. And so we have to really take advantage of this time to evaluate the impact of it. But one of the things we realized quickly, like we started to do some of the online um, offerings, but we had to go back and look at, does it meet the rigor of the program as we intended it, right? This has right. to be a valid therapeutic program. And if we're just doing something because it's cool and it, you know, it gives an opportunity, but it's, it's, doesn't meet the standard that we've mapped out up front, then we shouldn't continue it. Right. So right. you have to, you have to make sure that you're not sacrificing quality just because you need to do something different. Right. Right. Um, and there's no substitute for that in-person experience, especially in, in the business that we're in. So, 
you know, we, it's just that you have to constantly be evaluating it. And I think that's just, you know, that's, that's my mentality. Like you've got that vision and those objectives and you should have them on your virtual bulletin board. And every time you're making one of these decisions about, about pivoting, you should go back and look at that and say, does it still meet those objectives? Are we still, like I said, meeting the rigor of the plan? And if so, then let's keep going. Right. And right. let's, let's do the business analysis. And so it's um it's a challenge but but if you do it right you can come out of it much stronger i think yeah you know and i think michael it, it's interesting we've both talked about this too that it, it is when you start a nonprofit, especially when you're you know our size we're not big nonprofits; we're new nonprofits, and we're growing um but when you do that if you if you go into it with the mentality of you know i've got to run it like a business and i've got to have those steps out there it changes everything really it's 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 not a you know the side thing that you also do right yeah um, it is it is a nonprofit, and there mm -hmm. but but i think there is a huge misconception in society about what a nonprofit really is right, right. a nonprofit is i mean you are an entrepreneur it is a small business startup and you have to go at that as a startup business you're doing the same thing you're doing if you were starting up a small tech company you right. got to raise money. You got to build your marketing plan. You got to build your customer base. You got to build all your products and services. And oh, by the way, you can't pay anybody because people freak out if they think that nonprofits are actually paying people. Right. 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 So exactly. You're, you know, you're trying to build a company, you know, that that can sustain business and you really need Stanford MBAs on your team and you got to, you know, but you can't pay them. So it's a challenge. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But, but, um, but you, that's what you gotta, it's, it's a startup, you know, but yeah. if you think of the impact, right. I just go back and I just think of where, you know, we're two years into it. Right. And, um, we got off to a slow start, not intentionally, right. We were building, we were learning, we are, you know, we've done this with, you know, we'll talk about partnerships again in a second, but you know, you know what our marketing campaign is because you run it, right? Right, so, right. So it is a grassroots effort, but we've already helped a hundred people through our program, right? right? So if there right. are a hundred veterans and family members that have come through this and they've come through better than they started, right? Yeah, exactly. So, to me, it's it's worth it, right? Whatever sacrifices you're making and all these challenges that we've talked about. We, when we first started this, when I first got the idea and we got our team together, I I was like, look, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know how much it's going to cost. I don't know if I'm making a huge mistake, but if we can help one person, it's going to be worth right. it. Right. Right. Anastasia says that all the time. She says, if we can save one person, we can save one kid. And we go back to that comment that yep. we had for us where the kid said, uh, the very first time I posted anything about mental health and he said, I was going to kill myself tonight and I called my mom instead. And yeah. we're like, okay, well, yeah. keep going. <laughs> yeah. So on those yeah. days where we're like, why are we doing this? It gives you that. So that's, yeah, absolutely true. Um, so yeah, let's, let's talk about partnership, but, but let's talk about relationships as well, yeah. you know, and, and how, yeah. how those two go hand in hand. Yeah, right. they, they do. It's, you know, everything happens for a reason. You and I have said this, you know, uh, over and over again, but I, I kind of approach everything from the perspective of you never know if you're going to need one another again in the future. Right. right. And so you should go into every relationship and every partnership knowing that there's, there's going to be a future opportunity. Um, when, when I first started working with, with Lee and Trisha at Pretty Music Academy, it was because my daughter was a student there, right? right. And, um, and we saw an opportunity to partner on um, with my drum company where I was able to sponsor the studio and they were able to help me really kind of launch my brand. That was it, you know, there was a great partnership and if we would have stopped right there, everybody would have been happy. You know right exactly but, but then when it came time for me to say all right it's time to do something new um who do i go to right who right. who you know who passes my foxhole test right which are the people that i would want in the foxhole with me and right. i know the first call i make is to is to the pretties 
right? Hey, exactly. I have this idea. There could be risk. It could fail. We could lose some money, but think of the upside. Do you, you know, do you want in? Right. And right. fortunately they said, yeah, I had the same conversation with, with Ryan Fowler. Ryan and I had, in fact, when I first started getting the idea, I started talking to Ryan about it and, and Ryan was like, Hey, let's do it. I want in, I want to help you. Um, you know, so, so those type of relationships are and and, it's, and you know, when you're starting a nonprofit, um, there's different schools of thought, but I do believe that upfront people are really investing with you. You know, they want to partner with you because they believe in what you're doing and they want to be part of that. Right. So right. you got to really pay attention to those relationships up front. Um, right. But across the board, you know, and I look at it, how our relationship has evolved right from, um, you know, just, looking at how we can just support one another as confidants and just providing advice to one another to, you know, the partnership where we sit on one another's boards and we really are like, we're mutually committed to seeing one another succeed. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, and part of that, you know, we could have looked at it in the beginning and said, Oh, we're sort of competing for the same dollars. Right. Um, in some yeah. ways we're competing for the same dollars, but at the same time, we're, we're not at the same time we're competing for this we're, we're working towards the same goal and if we're working towards the same goal of stopping suicide then yeah. you know at that changes everything yeah so. absolutely and and we so we started to look at it initially my plan is every partnership's got some value you know at, at first glance and so it's worth a conversation right. and then what I start looking at is where are my gaps? you know, what are the things that I need to do better or what are some of my blind spots? And then let me go actively seek out a partner to fill that gap, right? So yeah. a good example of that is when, um, if one of our students needs help with an instrument, right? Yes. We want to help provide them an instrument. Well, that's not an easy program. It's not easy to get donated instruments, to store them, to clean them, repair them. And so, I happen to have a relationship with Deidre Stevens, who runs uh, Music for More and Music for Vets. And so her core business model and their nonprofit is to provide music instruments to schools and to music therapy programs. So what a great partnership. I can right, rely exactly. on her to help me provide those those instruments. And I know that if if she needs somebody to support her at one of her events, she can count on me and we'll bring our team, you know, to do, to do whatever there. Um, so, you know, George Wooden, who is, is my charity fundraising guy, who's supported me from the beginning when the push comes to shove and, and I, and I'm in a pinch and I need someone to help bail me out of a, of a, you know, of a fundraising snafu that I'm in, you know, we know we can count on that partnership and he's going to come and help me out. And right. it started, it started with a small opportunity and, you know, and he's been my partner moving forward. So, you know, it, actually go back to what that board. opportunity was, Michael, because it was, you were some, you were somewhere, you were at a bar mm -hmm. and you, you either ran into him. How did you meet him? Cause it was, yeah. I remember it being an interesting story. Yeah, it was definitely serendipitous. So we, we, we were having a fundraiser in Baltimore and, um, you know, we, this is early on, right? So we, we didn't really have much of a plan, but we were going to um, have a band play at a bar in Baltimore, you know, to have a couple auctions. And maybe four days before the event, we realized that everybody who had said they would come through with donations or items or sponsorships just bailed out on us. And, right. um, and our board vice president looked up George. I can't really remember how they found one another. We met with George and said, hey, look, we're in a pinch. Um, we don't really have enough material and we don't have the expertise to really run this event. And George said, I got it. He came in and just took care of the whole night. He brought some great stuff. And then we ended up, it was like incredibly successful. You know, it was just, it was just, it was just, it was good to see somebody who under, you got to know what your limitations are. And, yes. and we were definitely outside of our, of our, of our skill set. And, and George came in and bailed us out and then, we just part with them, partnered with them moving forward. 
That's great. You know, so Michael, I'm going to ask you a question and, and hopefully I'm not going to put you on the line here, but I want to, I want to give you the opportunity to, to say this. What does it take to put a single veteran through your program? Yeah, if it, it costs us about five or $600 to put somebody through a semester and that's about 12 weeks. And, okay. and, um, and that's if we're providing them either therapy or lessons. There are some okay. people, and let me let me just explain that difference because we we've, we've glossed over it. The core service that we provide is music therapy. However, if we if we only say that we offer therapy, there are a lot of veterans who won't take us up on that opportunity because there's still a stigma associated with mental health and needing therapy. And so you have a lot of people who just won't take advantage of it because of um, you know they don't think that they need that type of support. Um, so what we decided to do was also just offer music lessons. So somebody can come in and they can just take guitar lessons from Lee or from, or from Ryan. But what they don't know is that those teachers, right? All of Lee's teachers, all of Ryan's teachers, they've all gone through a pretty intense training program from our music therapist. So they understand what it's like to work with our students. And right. they're prepared. They know how to, if they see some triggers or they see some signs, they know how to elevate it and get them the help that they need. And it's worked. We've had people come in for lessons. Their instructor is now tuned to what the issues can be. They see a problem. They elevate it. The therapist can come in, intervene, and can get that person the help that they need. So right. we offer those as two different options. Um, so it costs about five, 600 bucks to put somebody through one of those programs. We do have people who, who we use both. It's the best way to provide them the, the support that they need. So it can be around a thousand dollars, right? All in after the therapy and the instrument. And we like to put people through two semesters. We think that that's a good, um, that's a good period of time to go through, learn some music skills, learn some coping skills, at the end of six months, we think that they are, you know, ready to transition. They got some tools to use on their own. Um, right. So if we just, if we just, you know, best case scenario, if it's five hundred dollars a student, we've got one hundred and forty students on the wait list. Right. One hundred and forty right? students. Yeah. That's on the wait list, right? And right. And you know, and we, I think we have fifty or fifty people you know, in the program concurrently. So at the same time. Right. Um, so it, it takes some, it takes some serious money, you know? Right. It, it so, well, I'm going to put people on the line out there. If you're watching this, please, two, two things. First of all, share it, share this so that other people can see what Michael's doing because it's so, it's so amazing what he's doing. And there's so many people who can use his help. Um, but also, I'm going to put you on the line if you can make a donation. And if you want to make a big donation and say, I want to do a semester or I want to do the full two semesters for one veteran, that is huge. So please do go to uh, warriormusicfoundation.org and you can donate there uh, right on your right on your page, right? Yeah, that's it. Try to make it yeah. easy. And I, ho I hope you like the website because I'm also the webmaster. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's very fancy. You're very fancy website. <laughs> well, because you just can't pay anybody. You because gotta be cost, that's, that's you gotta be cost effective. You gotta be cost effective. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. All right. If if people could only you know could know only one thing about what you do, if they, there's only one thing you could tell them, what would you tell them? I, I, I they should know that what we do works. Period. Yep. You know the 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 feedback that we get from the people going through our programs is just it's heartwarming it's reassuring that we know that it works and and it takes a team to do this right you got Absolutely. a lot of dedicated people everybody that's involved with this is involved because because they care and they want to make a difference and and they yeah. see that they can play some part whether it's donating their time introducing us to other partners you know everybody plays a critical role, but it helps. We've had the stories, you know, of people saying that the program has saved their life. And um, in fact, we just got, um, we just got a round of metrics from, from our music therapists. And, you know, it's things like 75% of the people who went through the program show improvements in some cognitive skills, or, I mean, it's, we collect metrics on a lot of different pulse points to make sure that it's, 
it's a successful program. And I think by yeah. any measurement, what we're doing is working. And yeah, exactly. I love, yeah, that's really great. Let me say, go back. You said, you said we have a hundred people on the waiting list, right? Yeah. And, and, and we have uh, 50 people going through it right yeah. now. I think I got those numbers wrong, but Trisha said that $60,000 we need to raise. Yeah. You know, it, and I want people to think about this too. And it's not just, you know, Warrior Music Foundation. It's not just Warrior Music Foundation or Burgers and Bands. There are so many nonprofits out there who really could use your help. And if we're talking, if we start adding those numbers up, there are a lot of people who are not going to be getting the help they need. Yeah, yeah they're, they're not. That's right. And we don't, we don't talk about this uh, a, a ton, but, you know, we, um, you know, we don't just limit our support to, to the military we support first responders we support law enforcement you know we we consider everybody that's that's in that public service our brothers and sisters and and we're going to take care of them as well and you know as you know we do as much as we can for just community outreach and community support we've we're usually the first group that's going to volunteer to support some other event or fundraiser to help Absolutely. people that need and and we we really and you know, it's also great because it's um it's a good business model because all these resources stay in the community. You know, I mean, right. we're we're providing jobs at the end of the day as well. You know, and we're right. we're helping people sustain their businesses, and you know, we're all kind of learning together as we do it. So yeah, no, I like yeah, I I I you know, I'm thankful every day that I met you and and I and watching what you do, it's been really. It's been really fun. It's been really amazing and just extremely ex inspiring. So um, I've become friends with a couple of your students, actually, mostly oh, yeah. through Pretty Music Academy. So it's been yeah. I, I've been able to hear the role you know, from their mouths, the success stories. So, Michael, thank you so much for coming on today. This was um, it's really fun. It's okay. always fun to talk to you. I like yeah, it better when you're in the yeah. office with me. But, you know. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for having me, even even but, with the mustache. I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I almost didn't. When I saw the mustache, <laughs> I almost said, oh, sorry. So, hey, uh, I want to tell everybody what's coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow, we've got Andrew Leonard of BL Technical. He's going to talk to you about all the tech stuff that you probably have run into and are going, what the heck? What am I supposed to do now? Um, and he's going to talk to you about some things that are surprising, like we talked about what the best video conferencing uh, platform is and and his answer surprised me completely so i think that's going to be um interesting for people tomorrow um again michael thank you so much for coming on i'm gonna put your name back up here again so people can find you warrior music foundation you're doing a lot of great things you can follow them on facebook you can follow them on instagram um and do we have a gosh i'm drawing a blank we have a youtube channel you have a you have a i don't yeah channel. actually i don't no i've just i've just hijacked my 1710 youtube i use that for all right well we need to do something for the for you yeah. about that we'll fix we'll that for you so all right all right thank you so much for coming bye-bye guys bye